Good morning, everybody. Well, once again, all these grand and glorious sunny mornings just keep rolling in, rolling in day after day. Can't beat it. Just can't beat it. Uh, earlier in the week, we talked about one of the prophets of the Old Testament, probably one of the best known prophets. That was Elijah. Now, when you think of Elijah, what comes to mind? Huh, come on, tell me. What, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Elijah? Tell me it's not the whirlwind, the tornado that comes along and sweeps him up into heaven. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome story. The interesting thing about that, though, is that's the end of the story. Why do we think about that all the time? Do we want our retirements to be grand and glorious just like that? Just don't think I want to be sucked up into the heavens on a tornado. I'd rather have a little bit of time left here on earth. Well, anyhow, Elijah. Yep, one of the more successful prophets, if you want to call it successful. He had a, a pretty tough life. Uh, when you're talking, people running after you because they want to kill you just about all the time. Yeah, that would be Elijah. Uh, he lived in a, a rather uh, difficult time in the history of Israel. Israel was divided. They had had like a civil war, so to speak. So there's north and there's south. And he's doing a lot of his prophesying up in the north. And he's got two characters. You'll know their names. Ahab, who was king, and Jezebel, who was queen. We always link that name Jezebel with an evil queen. And you know what? You're right. She was. She probably was responsible for more deaths during that time than the king was. She, she didn't like somebody. She just did away with them. Well... To make a long, long story short, part of Elijah's very successful career was he would prophesy against Israel. Now, Israel's the northern part of this divided nation. He would prophesy against them. And one of the ways he did that was he said, hey, God's going to withhold rain from the land. And everything's just going to dry up and die away. Well, well, Jezebel wasn't going to hear anything about that because, see, Jezebel didn't believe in God, didn't believe in Yahweh. Jezebel, she was a Baal person. She had brought all those household gods along with her, but Baal was the one. Oh, yeah. And try as they might, the prophets of Baal couldn't do a thing. And pretty soon, the king, queen, or basically begging for mercy and Elijah allows the rains to come again by talking to God hey there you go very successful but he also did some other things too part of his success was cleansing and ridding the land of false prophets come on you know what I'm talking about they died by the sword. Our lesson that we have coming up on Sunday is right after one of those incidents, probably the more, most famous one, where on Mount, Car Mount Carmel, uh, he t tells the prophets of Baal, go ahead, you bring fire down upon this, this sacrifice we have on the altar and see if it's consumed and they danced and they twirled and they did everything gave every chant in the world nothing along comes elijah dump all this water on there just keep dumping they poured water and the prophets of baal are probably laughing at them and calls down and there's a fire that consumes them consumes the the um sacrifice and all those prophets died by the sword kind of a gruesome story but because of that what happens next word gets back to Ahab and Jezebel but what happened Jezebel says he's a dead man so off he goes and what we see is in the midst of time and time again Elijah coming out on top 
he doesn't quite get the oomph that he needs for his life. He sinks into, in our lesson for today, a very deep depression. He's done everything that God has asked of him, and it seems like it's going nowhere. It seems like there's no one who is faithful in following Yahweh. Everybody keeps going out to these false gods, especially Baal. And he runs. He goes on the run. And he takes quite a run all the way to the southern part of the, of the kingdom. And he hides. And that's when we had the story of the cave where he's hiding in the cave and God says hey come on out to the edge I I got a word for you and that's where the the rainstorm a big thunderstorm comes through and there's an earthquake and then there's a fire and in none of those things is God found not until you get that quiet whisper but you see what's happening there were times in Elijah's life where he felt like he was abandoned, abandoned by everybody and abandoned by God. And yet, at the end of that story, God tells Elijah, there are 7,000 faithful people right in your midst. Open your eyes, they're right there. You are not alone. And that, I think, is the essence of the story. None of us are alone. You might feel that way, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's a, a valid feeling, but we are not left alone. We have brothers and sisters in Christ all around us, surrounding us to be here with us, to help us through our difficult moments. Oh, Elijah, that was pretty much the end of his career, and he passed it on. He passed on his mantle to Elisha. Oh, you know that story, right? Yeah. Elijah's walking into the dressing room and Elisha comes up and says, hey, can I have your autograph? Sure. He gives it to him and Elisha says, thanks. And starts walking off and Elijah goes, hey kid. Whips off his towel and throws it to him. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that was Mean Joe Green. I'm sorry, in the Coke commercial. I get them mixed up all the time. But you get the point. From that point on, it was Elisha who took over those prophetic duties. But don't be like Elijah, who thought he was the only one and everybody was out to get him and woe is me and I want to die. No, we might have those times we feel like that. But remember, you and I we are surrounded by brothers and sisters who love us, care for us, and will help us get through anything we face in life. Time to get busy. It's a beautiful day. God's blessings be with you. Jesus loves you, and so do I.